On this video, we're going to walk through today the basics of Nintex Workflow Cloud, but we're going to show it in the context of leveraging document generation and a sure sign in a workflow. So let's jump right in and walk through this. So when you look at the suite of capabilities that we have at Nintex, today in this session, we're going to walk through and cover how to build an online form, automate workflow with that, but during that process of the automation, we want to bring document generation into the picture to output a document and send it off for e-signature using Nintex AssureSign capability. So we're going to cover all of that as we get in here. All right, let's start with the form. So this form here is anonymously available, and we've built this form already with Nintex for Workflow Cloud. I'm going to start out the demonstration by showing you the end user experience first and step you through how we're automating this. So here we have a form. This particular example would be used, uh, we used it with a lot of banks uh, with the Paycheck Protection Program. Very straightforward form to fill out. I've already got a bunch of pre-populated information that's in here. We've got the ABC Cookie Company with the name. I need to put my phone number in here, and that's going to help drive notifications like a text message for the signature. And I can actually complete the signature on the phone. So we've got an address. I'm going to go ahead and put my name in here and the email address that we're going to send this to. Couple other fields, including a date. We've got some payroll information, jobs. We'll go ahead and select one of these boxes here for the purpose of the loan. We've got some contact information already populated. Know that on the form, we can also have rules. Uh, those rules can drive the hiding or showing of fields pre-population. So when I do additional owners, we're going to see an owner sheet that you could actually upload a document. Uh, we're not going to need that today, so I'll deselect it, but just know that those rules are capable. And we're going to go ahead and provide just some answer, random answers. Let's put yes on those first four. We'll put no on these. Come down a little bit, read through the terms, and hit submit. Once we've hit submit, that triggers the workflow for Nintex Workflow Cloud. So we've now completed our form. And by the way, this form can be available to anonymous users or authenticated users. I like this form because you can just send the user that URL and they can see it. You can even take some embed code that we give you and place this form inside the content well of a web page that you already have. That way you have your header, your footer, and all of your information already in there. So now that the workflow is executed, on the back end, what's going to happen is we're actually going to generate a document and send that document out for signature. So you probably heard that ding in the background, which is indicating that we've received an email notification on this. So let's go ahead and bring that email over on the page here. And we'll show you what that looks like. So we have a new envelope from Nintex Sign. And uh, we're going to be able to go out and now sign this document. Now, the messaging, the branding, the logo that you see in this email, you can configure that to be your own. But we're going to go ahead and begin the signature experience. Now, keep in mind that I just got a text message as well. So instead of doing this on the desktop, we could do it on the mobile device if we needed to or wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and show you this directly within the browser on the desktop. So you'll see the beginning of the Assure sign experience. We've got some legal information that we need to sign off on. So we'll go ahead and start the signing process. Now I'm going to go ahead and complete my signature here, my full signature. And then I'm going to provide a set of initials right here. So we've completed our signature. I'm going to adopt that signature. And you see the output of document generation right here, the PDF that we passed over. Now, when you look at this PDF, you're going to see all the data that I typed into the Nintex form is now in this document. And this is what document generation is doing, is we have these placeholders in the original document, which is actually a Word document, and we just fill it in, just like we've done here. And as we progress down through the document, you'll see the yeses and the noes. Everything that I filled out in the form is now present in the document. But the actual signature information is down here. We now have the initial blocks placed in the document, so we know where to put those. And then the signature information 
down here below. So I'm going to shrink that down a little bit so that we can get access to the apply initials. And when we do that, we're going to check off that we want to apply my initials to each of those boxes that we're uh, certifying on each of these items that are in the document. So I'll go through and do all of those. And then I finally apply the signature down here at the bottom. So once we're done, we'll click finish and the signature ceremony is now complete. We've signed the document. And what's going to happen at this point is the workflow is going to progress on to several other steps. Really up to you on what you want to have happen with the document once you've completed it. Some customers want that document to be in a final resting place like Box or Google Drive. OneDrive, maybe a SharePoint document library, really up to you on what's going to, where you want that to go. But in this scenario, we're going to go ahead and send out a couple notifications and also to the individual that signed the document, we're going to send out an email letting them know, hey, they fully executed the document and we're going to supply a copy of that document so they'll have it for their record. So all those steps involved in who needs to receive the document, where does it need to be located, all those things before the signature and after the signature that need to happen will happen when you configure your workflow to meet your business processes. So I think we're good to go there on the end user experience. I've got one more email that's going to come in. I'll show you here in just a second. But I want to dive in and show you how we built and configured this on the back end. A workflow like this doesn't take very long at all to build and configure. In this one, you're talking about a few hours of being able to build out the workflow and send it off for signature. I'm going to go ahead and open up that final email that came in. You'll see here, pay payroll protection application, sign in complete. You can put your custom message in here, but we can now open up that PDF and see the final executed copy of that document. It's really handy to be able to automate all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And there's our PDF. We'll give that just a second to download. And there it is. Good looking PDF. We'll scroll down the page just a little bit. We'll see all the data that we now have entered. And then come down to the signature sections down here below. So we'll see our initials placed on the page and then our signature down here on the final page at the bottom of the document. So really, really helpful and handy to see all of that. And you'll notice some data that's in here, uh, including when it was signed, the time, you know, the IP address that I'm coming from. Well, we've got some other data here related to it to make it a fully kind of authenticated signature that we'd be ready to go to court with if we needed to. Let's focus on the workflow and how we built this. Um, again, you can probably build this less than a day, maybe a few hours, be able to build a workflow and get it running. The way the canvas works, we have actions on the left. Take those actions, drag them over on the canvas, and drop them. Once you've dropped it onto the canvas, simply click on that action, and you can configure it. This little slider slides out uh, for the left-hand side, and you'll be able to tell that action exactly what you want it to do. So in this instance, we're giving the instance a name, something meaningful, so that when you come in here and look at it, you see the owner's name and the franchise number associated to it. That way it's not just a, a default um, uh, notification, or not notification, but text that's showing up. So let's show you how we built the form. Click on Nintex form. You'll see that it's available to anonymous users, authenticated. You could keep it behind a username and password. Click on design form. We're not going to go too much into the details here because I wanted to focus a little bit more on document generation, but this is where we build the form. Just like the workflows, we have controls. Take those controls, just grab them from the left-hand side, drag them over, drop them on the screen. Click on those controls, and you can configure them on the right-hand side. So we can modify the title, make it required, visible, read-only, uh, placeholders, test, text masking, a lot of different things that you can get into when building out your form, including the rules, like the rule I showed you just a minute ago, where you could show additional owners. And this is how we configured that rule. And again, all no code in everything we're doing here. So if additional owners, that's just a drop down, is equal to yes, and notice we give you those values because it's a checkbox, it's either yes or no, that's it. So we wanna make sure to make that clear and easy in here. Then we'll take this additional field called additional owner sheet, we'll make the visibility yes and we'll make it required. Uh, and then otherwise or else, the visibility will be no. 
So really easy to be able to build out those rules. So this is where we built the form. We've created some groups. Uh, we've got some uh, pre-populated data in here. So again, I'm not going to take too much time on the form, but this is where you're going to go and build your in-text form. What we really want to focus on is how it is that we created that document, the document generation feature. So we have an action over here on the left-hand side called document generation. Just take that action, drag it over, and drop it on the canvas. Click on that action, and we want to tell Nintex workflow what document that we're going to generate it off of and what the output's going to be. Now, the document's going to be located in a OneDrive environment that I have here. We're going to connect it to OneDrive, and we're going to go and grab that document. You'll see here, document templates, one. That's all we're grabbing in this instance is one template. Keep in mind you can have multiple templates. If you're going to onboard a new employee, and you're going to have 40 or 50 pages to sign, then come in and bring multiple templates together. You can combine those with document generation and have one single PDF as the output or separate files if you need to, or even the original Word document, maybe if you're going to go through a redlining process to make revisions. But in this example, we don't need to send it for revisions. We know it's good, so we're going to send it out with a single PDF file. So we load that up right here, and then once it's complete, we're going to output it as a file variable. And that file, the output, is what we're going to use when we send it for signature with the sure sign. Now, how does the document generation work? Really easy, no code way to do this. We have up here at the top what's called the Nintex tagger. Go ahead and open that up, and you're going to see all the data that you're working with in the workflow presented right here. So our start event is the form that we filled out. And you'll see this kind of ugly looking text here inside the blue box. That text, we can click on it, it's going to copy that text to our clipboard. We're going to take that text and put it inside the Word document. This is kind of like an old school mail merge where you're just going to place those tags in the Word document. That way, when the workflow runs and it goes and gets the Word document, it knows where to put your data inside the workflow. So what we're going to do is look in the OneDrive that I've got set up here. And you'll notice down here we have a document called PPP Borrower Application Template. So we're going to open that Word document up. You'll see the Word document here, and there's that ugly looking text right there. We've pasted that tag in here. That's how the data from the form gets presented or knows where to go within the Word document. So type of business, DBA account, legal name, business address, all these tags are placed in here. This is what allows a non-technical user Maybe uh, an individual that owns the document, owns the template. Maybe they're in the legal department. They can keep this thing updated with all the boilerplate text and the tags on their own without the use of a developer. So we get all these tags inside the document, and now document generation knows which Word document to grab, what tags to place in it, and where to save the document, because we have our path right here. So that's document generation. We'll use our get item from collection here. Um, because it outputs in a collection, we're going to have the collection. The first item in the collection is a zero. We'll store it as an output file right there. And then we'll come in here and send it off for signature. Now, the signature piece right here, we're going to connect over to a sure sign. We have an assure sign account, and we're going to leverage what's called an assure sign template. Now you have to have a template and a sure sign in order to use it. But the document that we're going to send over is right here. It's called PPP Doc Gen. So we're going to send that over and we're going to assign the signature to the owner name that was filled out in the form, the email address, and the phone number. So those three fields is going to determine who gets the signature. And we can just pass it right over. Now I will open up a sure sign real quick right here. This is the AssureSign interface, AssureSign.net. And we're going to go and look at the templates. So when you jump in here, you'll have templates that are already set up. I've got one already set up. I'll open it up here, and let's go down and see this template. So Mark Winnings op uh, uploaded this for us, SBA PPP Jock Gen. So when I click on Edit, we can now go and look at that template. 
Now, in this situation, there are multiple ways to have templates. You could have templates with all the content in it and just send it, and not even need it in Text Workflow Cloud. But in this example, we're using a generated document. We're passing it to a sure sign, and we're placing all the signatures in the appropriate places that you see right here. So we've already got this template set up um, here. That way, when it receives it, it knows where to place those documents. And then the workflow is just simply going to go down the page a little further. Sends it off for signature. We're going to go get the status of the envelope, and we're going to branch the workflow out. So once we've got that status, we'll look for it to be complete, and we'll get the actual signed document. This is where we get the document back, and then we want to send out that final email notification. So that very last email that I brought up, this is where it came from. We'll see the email address up here. Again, that's the one that I put placed in the form. Our custom message that we can fill out. And then we have the actual output of document generation, that file variable for signed documents. So pretty straightforward workflow. It's got a very happy path, just kind of goes straight down the page. But we're leveraging the capabilities of the workflow tool to automate this process so that the end user can just simply fill out the form hit send, it's on its way. Now your particular business process may be a little bit more complex. You may want to assign a task in the middle of that workflow. You can definitely come out here and do that because you might need an approval before you send it out for signature. You may want to store that document somewhere else, store it in SharePoint. Uh, maybe you have an opportunity in Salesforce that this is associated to. Go and update that record in Salesforce. Um, lots of things that we can do with the document generation capabilities and all of the actions that are present within Nintex Workflow Cloud. So remember, we've got about 100 systems of record that we connect to right out of the box that you see on the left-hand side. But if there's a system you want to connect to, you don't see it in the list, you can always create your own private connectors. We call them extensions. And with extensions, you bring those in, connect it to any system of record that you've got. In worst case, if you don't have a web service call to build your extension, you can always leverage Nintex RPA in order to connect to some of those systems. So you see here we have an action where you can trigger a bot to do some of those things. So hopefully this was a very good overview of Nintex Workflow Cloud, document generation, and a sure sign combined together. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let us know. Thanks.